Next, we're going to talk about, in case the one we choose to enter is currently at the lower bound, okay, currently at the lower bound, and the corresponding zk minus ck uh, is less than zero, then the objective function value z, z uh, hat can be improved by increase the value of xk. So now we're going to try to using the change of the current value, uh, the non-basic variable. We we'll call it delta k is the change of the increase of the xk. So therefore, the xk currently at the lower bound uh, increased by delta k. We're going to find out what is the best or the maxima of delta k it can do. Look at this equation like before. <coughs> The xb, the current basic solution, this is the entering uh, variable, non-basic variable. This is the current basic variable equals the b inverse times b minus b inverse times nl uh, times lnl and negative uh, minus b inverse times nu times unu and minus b inverse times ak times delta k. Basically, it's yk times delta k, negative delta k. Okay negative yk times delta k. And the beta, again, is the current solution. And this is the change when the delta change from 0 to something positive. So we're going to see how much delta can change. Of course, it's based on what? The yk, because I want the current xb, which is current basic solution, maintained within their lower and upper bound depends on the sign of y i k. Look at up new objective function value introduced delta is a positive value. Uh, delta k is a positive value. And <coughs> the change actually again will be this portion. Negative z k minus z k times delta k. And <coughs> so if the z k minus z k is negative and then negative of negative will be positive times the delta k is a positive. So this will increase my objective function value. All right. So these are, however, for the current entering non-basic variable xk, I wanted this change currently from the lower bound to a certain value, but this resulting new value should be still between lower and upper bound. So the maximum delta k can move is uk minus lk for that entering variable. Also, since the entering non-basic variable also going to impact the changes over the current basic solution, so xb, so we want to maintain the new basic solution still in between their lower and upper bound. Okay, so the change of the current basic variable basically is the current value minus yik times delta k. And they have to be maintaining between lower and upper bound. Okay, um, I'm going to stop this video and continue with the next lecture. And the delta k changes can be maxima is changing from its lower bound to its upper bound. So delta k has to be in between lower and upper bound range. Okay, for the other situation, let's take a look. If the yik, <coughs> the basic variable, if yik is greater than zero, then the corresponding xbi is decreasing, okay, decreasing as xk increase. So the maxima it can decrease is what? To his lower bound. So the maxima for those uh, delta k can be is when the current basic variables maintain his lower bound, uh, <coughs> not below his lower bound. So yk is uh, greater than zero, and that's the maxima delta k can go. However, on the other hand, if yik is negative, then as xk increase, the xbi is going to also increase. Okay, the maxima this x, uh, basic variable xbi can increase is to his upper bound. So therefore, the delta k can be only 
so big, so one of the basic variable reaches the upper bound and it has to stop to maintain the feasibility. We're going to summarize these three possible situations. One is the current interim variable move from his lower bound all the way to his upper bound. That's UK minus LK. Otherwise, when he increases value, one of the basic variables reaches the lower bound. Another one is once the current entering variable increases value, also the course, uh, one of the uh, <coughs> uh, basic variable as increases value and but not exceed his upper bound. So here we have a delta 1, delta 2, and UK minus LK. And that's the, and we're using the minimal. This is almost like a, a revised version of the minimal ratio test, but based on the delta 1, delta 2, and uh, UK minus LK. UK minus LK is the maximum range. The interim variable can change from lower bound to upper bound. Delta 1 is making one of the basic current basic variable to its lower bound. Delta 2 is the maximum range you can do is making one of the current basic variable into their upper bound. Okay, so this is how we increase non-basic variable xk uh, from his lower bound. Okay, this portion is the maximum amount of xk can increase before xbi reaches the lower bound. And the next is amount of xk can increase before one of the basic variable reaches its upper bound. On the other hand, we're going to talk about what if the current basic uh, non-basic variable we choose is at their upper bound and they can decrease its value so we can improve our objective function. Decrease its value if zk minus ck is great, greater than zero. Then <coughs> we can improve our current objective function and, uh, by decreasing the value of xk. Okay? Again, we're assuming delta k is the change of the current non-basic variable from uk minus delta k. <coughs> and the corresponding current uh, basic variable xb, that's the changes of xb. It's equal to beta bar. Beta bar is the current value plus yk times delta k. So increase or decrease based on the sign of a yk <coughs> over here. And also, the objective function changes will be the current objective function plus the zk times ck, uh, minus ck times delta k. This also depends on the zk minus ck is positive. So therefore, positive times positive will be improve my objective function value. That's the key. <coughs> All right. So this is part is xk is the interim variable. This part is <coughs> the current uh, change of a current basic ver uh, variable value after we increase the non-basic variable. And this is how the objective function value change <coughs> while we introduce positive delta k. Okay? To maintain the feasibility, the delta k can either for the entering ones, current entering one, is between currently on the upper bound minus delta k. It has to be between his lower and upper bound. So this cannot be greater than UK minus LK. One more time. Okay. Also, when uh, <coughs> XK decreases value, the corresponding basic solution equals the beta bar, which is current basic solution, plus YK times delta K. So this, these basic variable, va new basic variable value has to also be between their lower and upper bound for all of them. All right. So how that happened, I said it just depends on the yik value. If the yik is negative, 
then the corresponding basic variable, B, uh, xbi, will decrease its value as xk decreases value. So it goes the same direction. So this non-basic variable decreases value. Also, this bas basic value, uh, basic variable also decreases value. But how low this basic variable can decrease is not as low as their lower bound. Okay. Uh, uh, as low as uh, their lower bound. On the other hand, if the y k is positive. So as this uh, current ba non-basic variable decreases value and this basic value, uh, variable increases value, how high this basic variable can increase is up to his upper bound. So this is what it is. So it really depends on the sign of why k is either negative or positive. We're going to have a similar development right here. We're going to use a delta k as the minima between these three things. First is the range of xk between his low, uh, moving from his upper bound to his lower bound. Delta 1 represents if one of the basic variable could reach his lower bound. Delta 2 means one of the current basic variable reaches the upper bound. Okay, and that's what it means. Amount of xk can decrease uh, to maintain. That's it. We'll come back. Uh, <clears throat> now let's talk about the algorithms. Formally present the algorithm. The step one is change, uh, <clears throat> checking for the optimality and possible improvement. If the current <clears throat> variable at the lower bound have all of them, zj minus cj is greater than or equal to zero. Or, and also, for those variables and the upper bound, and their Z, corresponding zj minus cj is less than or equal to zero, then the current basic feasible solution is optimal. Then we can stop. The current basic solution is the optimal solution. Otherwise, we're going to choose one of those non-basic variable, xk, as an interim variable. And how do I determine the xk? is based on their corresponding zk minus ck. We're going to choose <coughs> either for those uh, non-basic variable currently at the lower bound, their negative zj minus cj, which negative zj minus cj will be less than or equal to zero, less than zero, and with this negative sign will be positive value. For those variable currently at the upper bound, we're going to directly using zj minus cj for those in the positive range. So we're going to compare who has the maximum. Okay? And we can break tie arbitrarily, choosing any one we want. If the one we choose is currently at the lower bound, we go to step two. If the, uh, the one we choose is currently at the upper bound, then we go to step three. Let's look at the step two first. The step two is if the current one we choose is the lower bound, then we can increase its value from its lower bound to lower bound plus delta k. And delta k is the amount of changes. We're going to compute the maximum possible value for delta k based on the minimum of the delta 1, delta 2, and uk minus lk. Okay. If delta k is equal to infinity, then the problem is unbounded. We can stop. If the delta k we choose is from uk minus lk, then the current <coughs> uh, non-basic variable xk is moving from its lower bound directly to its upper bound, but maintain is a non-basic variable. Still is going to be a non-basic variable. And based on that, we can update our current basic variables, and we can update our objective function value. Also. If the delta k we choose is based on the delta 1, then the corresponding basic variables, xbr, okay, xbr is going to be reaches lower bound and leave the basis. If the delta k we choose based on delta 2, then the corresponding basic variable, 
going to reach its upper bound and leave the basis. And xk entering as one of the basic solution, his new value because, uh, becomes lk plus delta k entering basis in row r. Okay. And we can update the current basic variable solution and update my objective function value. Then we're going to pivot based on the rk as a pivot elements. rk is row r column k because xk, x, uh, <coughs> k columns come into basis. We're going to do a pivot, make it an identity column, that's it, and move back to step one to choose next interim variable if possible. If the one we choose is currently at the upper bound, we're going to go to step three. Let's take a look at this, step three. Okay, if currently at the upper bound, then this value can be decreased by delta k, be decreased by delta k. Again, we're going to compute the delta k based on the delta one, delta two, and uk minus lk. If the delta k is <coughs> infinity, then the problem is unbounded. Or if delta k is chosen from the uk minus lk, then the current uh, non-basic variable xk moving from his upper bound to directly to his lower bound and still maintain a non-basic variable. We can update our <coughs> Uh, current basic solution, we can update our objective function value accordingly, based on the delta k. Okay? And the basis did not change, this is just the basic solution change, objective function change. Otherwise, if delta k is base, uh, ba uh, decided ba based on the delta 1, then the corresponding r uh, uh, basic variable r, br, is going to his lower bound and leave the basis. If the delta k is determined by delta 2, then the corresponding xbr, which is current uh, basic variable, reaches the upper bound and also leave the basis. Okay? So therefore, xk entering its new value becomes uk minus delta k and entering the basis in row R, and update the, <coughs> uh, the current basic value equals to the current basic solution beta bar plus yk times delta k. And also update the objective function value equal to the z bar, which is the original uh, uh, objective function value plus zk minus zk times delta k. It's fairly simple. Then we can pivot according to yrk and go back to step one to find another interim variable. Okay, this pretty much concludes the uh, theoretical part discussion of the bounded variable linear program, uh, algorithm simplex method. Uh, we're going to use the next lecture uh, video to explain <coughs> an example, uh, walk you through everything, see how that worked. Okay. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.